rules of procedure, then you have two minutes. Proceed. And two minutes it is. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. My question goes to counsel for the uh, governor. And Honorable Speaker, I would like to refer him to volume one of his uh, uh, documents. At page seven, Honorable Speaker, uh, paragraph 20, there is an averment there, counsel, that has been made by the governor that in fact there was a holding of the High Court, and this is in reference to Malindi ELRC petition number E006. I don't know if we are together. Uh, counsel, page seven of the bundle at paragraph 20. Counsel, the volume number one of the governor's bundle, page seven, for heaven's sake, honorable speaker, my time is being wasted by things that I've already said. Just proceed. Honorable Speaker, I'm referring to bundle volume one of the governor's Senator bundle. Sifuna, you can only seven. repeat if I tell you to repeat. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Counsel, you have presented uh, the averments at paragraph 20A as a holding of the court, that in fact the paragraphs you have superimposed there were a holding of the court. Now, you are a lawyer of uh, great repute, and reading a judgment, you can ascertain what a finding of the court is, as opposed to an analysis of the presentations of the parties. Honorable Speaker, the judgment referred to is at page 70 of that same bundle, exhibit number one. And I want the counsel for the governor to confirm to this house that in fact, the paragraph quoted at 20A is not a finding of the court on the question of what two-thirds uh, means and what should happen when there is a decimal. Honorable Speaker, I will refer you to paragraphs. He has quoted from paragraph 83, which cannot be a holding of the court. And in fact, the holding of the court should be at paragraph 86 of that judgment. Honorable Speaker, my question therefore to him is, is it proper for you to present an analysis of the case by the learned judge as a finding of the court? Honorable Speaker, that is the question I wanted to put to him. Senator, Senator Bonnie. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my comment on this will be limited on what I beg that the House adopts to help this country. This is a very serious matter, and Mr. Speaker, it is already on record that no court can injunct Parliament. So the first PO should collapse. A decision has already been made. My second comment, Mr. Speaker, is on the question of numbers. Kanzo Mutuma, what, what would you like the governor to prove? It is a, a scientific fact that 47 divided by two thirds is 31.3. 31 As you guys say in law, res ipsa loquitor. It proves by itself. What do you want him to prove? It is not possible for a human being, Mr. Speaker, to be a fraction. I want, Mr. Speaker, to urge the council that because you also have a, a responsibility to grow the philosophy of impeachments, let us agree that on this one, let us give it to the governor. We give him the fact that a fraction of a human being does not exist. Next time, come with full numbers and we would listen to you. Finally, Mutuma, because you are very experienced in this process, listen to what the Speaker of the National Assembly said about the same thing. The County Assembly of Nyamira said about the same thing. The County Assembly of Kericho 
about numbers during elections. They have said the same thing. So why do you invite, to invite us to disagree with all of them? So as to please you or to allow the proper jurisprudence. Senator Ledama. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I just want some clarity from the Council of the Governor. Um, the Council for the Assembly has presented facts that this matter had already been determined by a court. In their volume one, page 131, there's a finding of the court that when it comes to the issue of two thirds, it is not an issue where you determine the, the question of a human being being able to be fractioned, but rather a scientific. Are you then, in your submission, questioning, or rather, have you challenged, or has anyone else challenged that finding of the court in the matter of Michael Justin Dunda, which is the county assembly of Tana River? So that is a point that I'd like you to clarify because this is a finding of the court. Number two on that issue is on the finding on the matter to deal with JSC, where the court, according to the facts presented by the assembly, stated that you round off to the nearest whole number. What would be the nearest whole number in a matter which is 31.3? Is it 31 or is it 32? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Fernandez, Senator Samson Chirange. Mr. Speaker, you need to protect me from the majority leader. Mr. Speaker, just I want to agree with my colleagues. Just a quick comment is that uh, in the history of this parliament, no one can injunct parliament. So I think on that aspect of injunction of parliament or court order, uh, <coughs> or court order before the parliament or the senate, it does not hold water. And therefore, I think uh, I would advise the defense team of the governor to stop pursuing that line. Number two, and finally, Mr. Speaker, on the issue of two third. Mr. Speaker, my, my concern is on Section 33 of the County Governments Act and Article uh, 181 on removal of uh, governor. Mr. Speaker, and in the decision of Raila Odinga versus IEBC uh, in 2013, the Supreme Court pronounced itself that when the process, and I want to extrapolate, when the process has taken off and it is time bound, as uh, envisaged in that ruling uh, before the Supreme Court, that process is time bound. So by the fact that you read the charges and the process is ongoing, when you look at uh, rule number 16, rule number 14, and rule number 30 on the removal of, uh, of, the, of a governor, the process is already ongoing and the train has left the station. So Mr. Speaker, the question should be, if the process has already begun as per section 33, uh, with the genesis of Article 181 on removal of the governor. Therefore, what happens, Mr. Speaker? I agree that in scientific proof that uh, you cannot have a fraction of a human being. But also, for some of us who are not very good in mathematics, there is also principle of truncation. So, Mr. Speaker, you must balance both so that at the end of the day, we give justice to the county assembly and we give justice to the governor and any other person, including the people of Kericho, Mr. Speaker. So since the train has left the station, let us go ahead and listen to the merits and demerits of the case, and then we determine. I submit, Mr. Speaker. Senator Kajuang. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the issue of uh, limits of judicial authority on independent institutions has been settled. And I think we have seen some precedents that have been presented to us. Secondly, we need to make a distinction between procedural fairness and procedural technicality. Uh, procedural fairness demands that the governor for Kericho has been accused of gross misconduct and all sorts of allegations have been made against him. This is his opportunity to defend himself against those allegations. There should be procedural fairness as required in our constitution. The other aspect is procedural technicality. 
And Mr. Speaker, you do recall that if we were to be obsessed with procedural technicality, in 1992, it is John Harun Moore who would have been the president of Kenya because he went to court and said he's the only one who presented his petition in a full scap rather than on an A4 paper. Mr. Speaker, the ruling that has been referred to by both parties, we are getting different interpretation. On this matter, we should not go with Rule 30. Rule 30 empowers the Speaker to make a decision. Mr. Speaker, I want to encourage the way we did in the case of Nairobi Governor, Governor Sonko, there were affidavits that were sworn by MCAs that discredited the outcome of the vote. The Speaker ruled that let's allow all parties to prosecute their case, and then the Senator sitting as a jury would make a decision on the ultimate day of voting. I would propose and I would urge Mr. Speaker that we do not refer to rule number 30, but allow the House to proceed and ensure that there is procedural uh, fairness uh, in the matter of Kericho. Senator Kathuri. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for this uh, chance of the two minutes also to make a comment on this very, very important matter. And uh, Mr. Speaker, as we are here, many Kenyans are watching at us. They are grown on their TVs because, you know, uh, many Kenyans are now sensitive on devolution, sensitive on uh, governance and all these things. So, Mr. Speaker, the PO number one is actually uh, dispensed of naturally. So the PO number two, Mr. Speaker, besides, uh, because the, that 1.3, the High Court pronounced itself that you go to the nearest zone number. When you go to the nearest zone number, you land at that one, Mr. Speaker. The other argument is about now the direction that has been put in Kericho County when they were erecting the, 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 the Speaker of the County Assembly. So, Mr. Speaker, because this matter is about mathematics, so what I would request as also other colleagues are putting it, Mr. Speaker, we would like to hear these cases. We give the Kericho County Assembly and the Kericho County Governor time to prosecute their matter before this Senate, Mr. Speaker. Because if we determine this matter in any other way, rather than listening to the parties, then we will not be giving justice to the good people of Kericho and the country at large, Mr. Speaker. So Senate will be a house that cannot be able to protect the devolution, Mr. 